Hey guys, uh, so we just watched the Square Enix press conference. <laughs> no, I'm lying. We didn't just watch it. Uh, we watched it earlier today, and this is the first time we're all available because we're all not uh, in each other's living rooms now, which kind of sucks. Um, I definitely enjoyed watching everything with you guys at Joel's house. And I, <laughs> I miss all... Joel's teary eyes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think we've decided this is pretty much going to be a yearly thing. Um, this is definitely the superior way to enjoy the conferences. But when we all got back to our respective houses or our work um we watched the square enix press conference <laughs> and uh we'll start with the first game they showed off just cause three which i thought was an awesome game to open it up with because it's something that americans like and as you'll see <laughs> for a lot of the other games not a ton of them are games that americans like so it was cool that they they did start off with just cause three which is kind of a blockbuster something that a lot of people would be looking forward to what'd you guys think about it i think it looked really good the thing i'm most excited about is the uh the the wingsuit Yes. Oh, um, that, that was so good. Like that was one of my favorite things in Saints Row Four was like being able to just glide around the map. That's going to be pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In oh, yeah. Far Cry, I think all your movement, attacking bases and stuff, is all leading up to when you get a wingsuit for the first time. <laughs> yeah. Basically. And then everything just becomes amazing. Yeah. I mean, it looks amazing. I don't think anyone ever thought it was not going to be amazing, and it was. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it's going to be a great game. Now, if they could get multiplayer. <laughs> they could just call it like Far, or not Far Cry, Just Cause Three, more Just Cause, and they'd be set. Like it's just <laughs> bigger, more explosions, more more gadgets, and um, more of those grappling hooks, which is what all the mods did on PC. Like everyone loved that. Yeah, it didn't seem a um, a ton different than like Just Cause Two from what we saw. Even graphically, you know, it looked updated, but it, the art style and everything looked very similar. But I don't think anyone would really complain about that. Like. Just Cause is awesome. More Just Cause is also awesome. I don't know if it's a $60 game for me, just because there's so many other open world violence games, um, but possibly, <laughs> you know, it's possibly like a $30 game, $45 game. Yeah. Uh, or a borrowed jo- Joel's digital copy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that too. Uh, and then we saw Nier. Um, how would you describe Nier? I don't even remember that, honestly. It's a, it's kind of like a JRPG. Oh, it kind of. Right? It is. It's a JRPG. I mean, it pretty much is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I played it for the PS3. It was good. Um, presentation was a little weird. They had the um, guy with the really weird head walk out on stage. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's that. Really, I was... Which is really just... Jeremiah, if you missed that. Here. No, I, I saw that, saw and okay. I did not really understand what was happening. Like, no what one am did. I watching? Well, what was dumb is like you could barely hear him through his mask. He just had like this echoing voice with a translator over it. I was like, what are they doing? Like, again, <laughs> they're a Japanese com- company. You know, things that make sense to us might be different to them, yada, yada, yada. The Japanese and American game markets aren't the same. But I spent most of that time going, why on earth are they doing this? Like, who... Who is this for? <laughs> Who's looking at this going, ooh? I've been waiting for that mask to come out. Now it's real. <laughs> yeah, so that was near. Um, again, we're not picking on, like, or these other guys are being nicer than me. I'm not picking on the Japanese games market or anything. It just, for a press conference at a large American games show, some of this stuff kind of seemed weird and out of place. Yeah, um, it was a bit odd. And then, Joel, what did we see next for Tomb Raider? Uh, nothing, just a trailer. And some like showing behind the scenes of modeling Laura. You put in your notes because uh, I was I, up and down unpacking during this part, so I missed some of this. Uh, it was like an iPhone game, Laura Croft. Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that was. Then, oh, yeah, no, then, yeah. Then afterwards, then they showed off like a. Uh, it looked like what's at Monument Valley a little bit, but Laura mm-hmm. Croft kind of version. Laura Croft go, Laura Croft global offensive. It was a really <laughs> pretty game. Like it, the art style was kind of like that transistor type game where it's mm-hmm. just kind of like. I don't know, just simple, simple colors and simple shading. Right. It looked like it could be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. As fun as a mobile game can be. Yeah. <laughs> as fun as a action platformer could be with a touch screen. <laughs> I guess we'll see how that goes. Ugh. Yeah. I don't think, I don't even think it had that much action platforming. Really? What, when, what, wait, a Laura Croft they, game? They showed have? literally 15 seconds of it. Oh, okay. yeah. Because if a Laura Croft slow, game doesn't have action though. platforming, what else is there? It was slow paced. Huh. All right. Uh, and then they showed off Heaven Sword. Not Heavenly Sword, but Heaven Sword. What was that, Joel? <laughs> um, gosh, what was Heaven Sword? 
I think you know. I think I put in the notes. I think he was actually. Um, I'm looking at. Uh, I think he was Dragon was Quest. It Final like, I think Fantasy? he was. No, I think it was Dragon Quest. T- something to do with Heaven Sword. Like, like again, because it was kind of like, like some of that stuff was like Japanese, you know, oriented. I got a little confused because it had a lot of different like logos and stuff on it. So yeah, I was trying yeah. to keep up with it. Um, but they showed Dragon Quest at the same time, so I think it might have been like a team up between two different teams or developers wait, wait, working on it. Again. Sh- Sure, that wasn't just the Final Fantasy VII remake. No, no, it was before that. It was very quick as well. It was like a 20, 20 30 second little like they did a little quick montage between stuff. So yeah, Odd. that's all I know. On it. it just looked like looked like a Dragon Quest game. But then they did show off the Final Fantasy VII remake. Uh, just the trailer again. Just the trailer again. No actual gameplay, which means yeah, it must really not be see very far like. along. Then, don't you think? It, the, the, at the end, it says "in development," which means we started it last week. <laughs> we got a sick six trailer. Of, we saw a lot of that in this conference, though. Yeah, the whole like we've got six months of concept art under our belts now. Check it I, out. I think it's really. I think people are really using. You know what? Let's put a trailer. We don't have to do jack squat. Then we realize, oh, do people really want this? All right. Let's validate it. Let's do it. You know, where Ramp instead, <laughs> yeah, like Joy messaged me and said, she's like, why can't more games be, or like developers be like Bethesda? They hide the game and then when they show it, it's coming out. It's not, hey, it's, we're going to bleed this for the next three E3s and Ugh. then give it to you. You know what I mean? It's kind of like Division. here, here's Bethesda, just five months, you can play the game. That's it. You know, that's fine. It's just, it's annoying seeing all these games going, look, we're showing it off. Like, I'm kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm getting pissed off by E3 now just because it's like every game is, well, we're not going to see this for two years. So honestly, don't even show me. I don't even care. Like, I don't, I'm, I don't really feel like waiting two years to we'll, play we'll a game. We'll revisit that mentality it, so. when we get to other stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, for some games, they need to, for a lot of games, developers need to show it off so people are excited, so they buy the consoles, so they, like, people need to see what's in the pipeline. Uh, the only reason that Bethesda can get away with that is that they know Fallout 4 is pretty much a guaranteed awesome seller. They don't need to make their investors happy years in advance. Because remember, E3 is also a trade show. Like, they're showing off for investors and stuff. Uh, so they don't need to show off for a lot of that stuff because it's it's a known quantity in the same way that Rockstar can wait as long as they want to talk about GTA. Like, they're going to sell a lot of copies. It doesn't really matter. Um, right. But for a lot of games, no, they need that buzz. I mean, how many people I, today have you seen talking about Shenmue who have never heard of Shenmue? Like, they couldn't just wait and go, oh, the Shenmue game's coming out. No one would care. But everyone wants to go look at the game that hit two point seven million dollars on Kickstarter in a day or whatever it did, and took Kickstarter down for a while. <laughs> right, people are interested in that. That builds buzz. That builds hype. Lots of people who have never heard of Shenmue and were probably too young to play the last one fourteen years ago. A lot of those people might be interested enough to go take a look now. Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, in a perfect world, <laughs> I would like them all to I'm announce the games enough. like one week before they come out. Like trailer, gameplay demo, real demo you can play, you know, pre-ordering, whatever. Drop it you, all. You play? No, no if, a if demo half, that you can play. <laughs> if, Half-Life, if Half-Life had a trailer, it said coming in 2017, Joel. Yeah. Mm. You would be, oh my god, it's the best thing ever. I'm so glad they finally just let us know. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Just saying. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, th- they also do have a little bit of a track record that if they're going to make a game, they they are going to make it. You know what I mean? If they say they're making a game, they're probably going to make it. You know what I mean? So does Valve. They haven't said they're making anything. <laughs> well, yeah, but, yeah, but they, that, again, they don't say anything if they're not making anything, too. So. Right. Um, but they're another company. They don't say stuff because they don't have to. They can kind of do whatever they want. Uh, but anyway, back to Square Enix's press conference. Uh, then there was a... Disney game for 3DS, you said? No, it- no, we, we skipped one. Um, we skipped one, okay. Final Fantasy, or World of Final Fantasy. Oh, yeah, World of Final Fantasy. So what's the deal with that, James? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I don't know what's going on. It's like this super kitty. like, clearly I'm not the market for that game. <laughs> You're like, never have I felt so old. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't even know what's going on. It looks it looks cutesy and kiddish, um, but I, they didn't really show much. I mean, it's a different type of Final Fantasy experience, and that's pretty much it. I yep. mean, that's all they said. It's it's an RPG, but right. I imagine we'll have a lot more to see next year at the press conference or something. <laughs> maybe, maybe, yeah. 
Uh, but now, Kingdom Hearts 3. What's up with that? Um, yeah, a long time in the making. Uh, they don't say they didn't say a release date again, but the game sure looks awesome. I mean, I'm not a fan of it. I never played any other ones. Uh, Joy has played one and two um, and really enjoyed it, except those games are really old now and they have a, like some of their UI and just kind of like just trying to figure out what to do is a little more complicated. But uh, this new one looks really awesome. She's pretty excited to play it. So, although well, I mean, she has I, a very hard time playing any console games now, like just any game in general, like she just likes playing stuff on her phone or the 3DS. I, we'll see I, if it I will played the play. other one. It was okay. Um, the the biggest thing, like you would have combat and then just like this void, empty town that you're walking through. Like it felt very just, it just felt very inorganic. Mm-hmm. Um, this one at least looked like it was a little more action packed. And look, it looked like the environments were probably a little more interesting to to explore. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not probably not a day one or day one twenty purchase for me, but we'll but see. tons of people are super excited about Kingdom yeah, yeah. Hearts. So this for, is definitely for, the, this for is those a big that deal. like that game. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Up next is uh, Disney. You just wrote and Disney. Oh no, fans of Disney. So joy. Okay, sorry. I'm going through your notes, Joel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, then they showed off Hitman. Hitman. No actual gameplay, though, right? Uh, it, like it, it kind of like it was clips of gameplay, but just in like cinematic. It was like mode. a montage. Yeah, yeah. So it was. Yeah. It, more than we got with Assassin's Creed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like little vignettes of game of gameplay, but it was it was actually gameplay. So that it was, was nice a little confusing because I couldn't tell like if it was actually had a story to the game or if it was just literally allowed you to just take on random contracts mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that things would change. Like if it was almost be like Minecraft hitting random to the world and then like you just try to replay areas. I wasn't really quite sure. As a uh, Wait, say that again. Yeah, you say Minecraft. <laughs> um, the, the, in the game, did you did you watch it, James? Yeah. What you- yeah. They 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 talked about saying how you could go back to one area and it'd be completely different, and so like it might not be like the same area, the same room, or something like that. So I'm wondering like they're trying to make like a completely randomized scenario, whether that's the main mission or if that's an extra mode. They they weren't quite clear. Okay. As I mean, a Hitman cool, but- fan, I got really worried when they said stuff like and you can compare something about your comparing your scores with your friends on like social engagement and any game that pushes any sort of social <laughs> engagement instantly irritates me because like if there's anything i don't want in a hitman game it's to be in the middle of some like 45 minute stalking session when i'm just about ready to execute my target <laughs> and it's like ah your buddy chris did it 30 seconds sooner it's like shut up i don't but this is not. Yeah, I don't yeah. care. It's like, it's like playing trials where you see like the yeah, ghost. Exactly. Like I, I don't. I don't know what, how they're going to do it yet. Ghost assassin. But this is one game. Like if there was one game that didn't need this, it was this. Like Hitman is not supposed to be about that. I don't. Yeah. They tried to turn it more and more into an action game, and it's just like action games are fine, but that's not really what Hitman's been about. Like Hitman's becoming Rambo, which is stupid. Or actually, I did Sam see Fisher. A lot less- closer to Sam Fisher. There was a lot less shooting in this uh, demo, for sure. I was happy to see that. Like, the shooting's important, but the last game let you get away with too much shooting. Like, you could actually FPS your way through all of Absolution, basically. Yeah, Absolution felt a lot like a Splinter Cell game. Like, the whole, it was oh, fun, they can't see me because just... I crept away, and oh, I'm over here now, and here's that thing showing where I was, and I'm going to sneak up behind people and, like, shiv them really quickly. Like, <laughs> that, I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Um, and then... Star Ocean is back, I guess. Anybody? Hey, I, I've yeah. heard of that name before, but I've never played it or oh, okay, ever okay. read about it. Uh, it's yes, a, it's a popular I've, old I've JRPG. i got it for the PS2. Yeah, it, it's um, an old RPG role-playing. Or, well, let's see. When was the last one? Um, first release was in 1996. Okay, the last one was in 2010. So there is a PS3 Star Ocean. It's a JRPG. It's just as JRPG e as the rest of them. Um, lots of <laughs> lots of really weird uh, characters. I used, to, with, I used to think that JRPG standard for just junior RPG for some reason. No, no, Japanese RPG. Yeah, I I, I, I took a long time to realize, realize oh, that. Okay, actually, a long sense. time. Well, 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 the reason why is because <laughs> if you think of some Japanese RPGs, they have the kind of like smaller caricatures with like big heads and stuff. 
So I always thought that meant like just like I don't know, like you have like the gritty, more adult RPGs, then you have the ones that are. I don't gotcha. know, like that the, makes it. I the kiddie or Final like, Fantasy looking ones, right? Yeah, I, was like, I, I actually can see. Yeah, that. yeah, I can see how you would come to that conclusion. Um, I mean, it, it it doesn't look bad. Like again, I'm not into JRPGs, um, but the combat looks decent, and like the exploring looks kind of fun. But the only thing I just, the thing I can't get into about JRPGs is, you know, when we when we play a game like Witcher or something, you feel like you're moving through this like actual living, breathing town with people and. Yeah. You know, every just the the trees are moving and stuff like that. It when you play a game like this it it just feels so desolate and wide. Like you walk down the streets and it's just there's nobody moving around. It's just very really static. Just kind of bland. <laughs> but whatever. Whatever. Starish and fans were So love it. what was everyone's impression of the Square Enix oh, wait, conference? One more. Oh, oh what, what's what? Le- what's left? Sorry. Deus Ex. Oh, Deus Ex. Sorry. Yeah, Mankind Divided. Uh what did you guys think? Well, what did we see? Uh, just a gameplay trailer. Like a trailer with some gameplay in it. Yeah, I actually don't remember that trailer at all. It was I was kind of worn out. It was a long conference with a lot of just flashy, like, random stuff that wasn't quite holding my attention. So, yeah, I don't remember that part at all. Well, what I do mean, we know, then, about uh, Mankind Divided? Other than the good. lady who I mean, came out to present good. it, it looked like she was working in a flower shop or something. Like, she was way happier and way more <laughs> dressed up than anyone else at E3, which I thought was pretty amusing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. She's like, hey, everybody, let's talk about Deus Ex. <laughs> Despotic game set in a future where everything's totalitarian. <laughs> it's like, all right. Um, I mean, it looks good. It, I mean, it's just, again, more of the same. Right. Just, just a lot prettier than last time. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, last time was pretty, but... No, but but having to be able to work with the physics and stuff that they have now, right? So. Yeah, looks good. Cool. I'll play it. Well, <laughs> sorry if if we don't have like a lot of good feedback to give on this, guys. We're not like we we don't play a ton of JRPGs, and none of us are huge Square Enix fans. Like we don't have anything against Square Enix, but like we don't follow them a ton as a company. We don't have a lot to add. This is more of just a small summary of what we saw. Um, but thank you guys for listening and there'll be more of these coming very shortly. Stay tuned.